So, Avi. Hey. <laughs> Most of us know you from the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, obviously. Can you tell me how does somebody decide that they're going to be a pro football player? I don't think you decide you want to be a pro football player. I just started playing uh, football in high school, Soro Fleurier, uh, for fun. And uh, from there, I got an academic and athletic scholarship. And then from there, you know, you put the hard work and effort in. And then as the years go on, you hear that, you're, oh, you're pretty good, you're pretty good, you're pretty good, you're getting better. And then I think the possibility of playing pro. But I never had the idea when I was in grade 9 or 10 that I wanted to play pro football. It was just a progression that I got to. And... Uh, when it was time to graduate university, I got drafted uh, really high. Now you saying people telling you you're pretty good, you're pretty good. Does that put in your mind that you could actually be second pick in the first round draft? You did your research. I, I like it. <laughs> um, yeah, a little bit. I mean, when I came out, I was uh, very highly scouted, and, and I did really well in, in university. I was all Canadian. Um, so, of course, people are you know telling you that you're good, you're good, you can do it, you can do it. But, I mean, that starts also at an early age, too, right? Like, when I was in grade 11 and 12, I started playing. You know, I was team captain. I started doing really well. Went to university on a scholarship, started playing really well there. Um, and it just slowly builds. It's, I don't think it's something that happens overnight, and I don't think it's something that I decided once upon a time that, hey, I'm going to play pro football, and here it is. But you work at it every day in the gym, uh, every day on the football field, and it happens. Now, when you were picked for the Ottawa Renegades, was that like a, yes, this is my home team? Yeah, I was super excited when Ottawa picked me. I was worried because Hamilton Tiger Cats had the first pick, and Ottawa had number two and three, and I was really worried that Hamilton was going to pick me. Um, and thank God I wasn't that good, and I was the number two pick overall, and I ended up going to Ottawa. So it worked out really good for me. I was really happy. It was where I wanted to go, back home, uh, you know, play in the city that I grew up in. I grew up watching the Ottawa Rough Riders. So it was really, really cool for me to play at Lansdowne Park. And, uh, yeah. When it comes to changing teams, you went from 2004 playing with the Ottawa Renegades to the Winnipeg Blue Bombers in 2006. Uh, when that comes up, what, what goes through your mind? Are you happy that somebody's interested in you or are you sad to be leaving? Um, well, with the dispersal draft was a little tough because, you know, when the team folds, there's 40 more players out there looking for jobs. So you're always worried, man, that, that's a lot of players becoming free agents right away. So when I got picked number two again, uh, the only player in CFL history to be picked number two twice overall, um, it worked out really good for me because I was really happy to be picked. I was really happy to pick so high. And coming to Winnipeg, I was a little worried because I'd never been to Winnipeg other than to play. I didn't know anything about the city. You, it's got a really bad rep, but I was happy to be picked so high. High and I knew the team really wanted me, so uh, and I knew they loved football here. So, you know, you want to have a career in a city where they love whatever you're doing, right? Whether it be hockey uh, now uh, or you know football or, or whatever it is, you want to be somewhere where they love you. And having played for so many years in Winnipeg, um, what does it mean to you when you walk down the street and people? I mean, you're a big guy, anyways, but people know who you are. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I love it. I mean, when I played in Ottawa, uh, my own neighbors didn't know I played for the Renegades. Um, and I was, you know, the number one pick or number two pick overall. The day I got here, I had a couple, about a dozen people at the airport with signs saying, welcome to Winnipeg. So, complete strangers. Awesome. So, it was really cool. Even now, you know, I'm a big, goofy, brown guy with long hair and a beard. And uh, I get recognized a lot. And it's fun because, you know, it really goes to show that, you, you know, you put your heart and soul and your body on the line. And the fans in Winnipeg really love that. So, it was really, it's, it, it is... Every time I get recognized, it's really cool. Uh, I think some of my friends and, and my lady really hate it because it happens quite often, um, but I still love it. And in being recognized, you've been recognized uh, with nominations for awards, and you also uh, took Offensive Player of the Game one year. Um, when something like that comes up, is it something you sort of expect as an athlete to get? Or is it always a surprise? No, it's always a surprise. It's always a surprise. I mean, there's so many good guys out there. There's so many people working their butts off to, to be the best. And to be recognized by your team or to be recognized by the league and, and winning some awards, is, it's pretty cool. It's, uh, you never expect it. You hope for it. You work hard. That's why we do everything we do. And then you get it. And I don't know how you look at it, but I would say... In March of last year, you retired. I would say the biggest award ever is being asked to be to come out of retirement. Yeah. Uh, Calgary did that for you. 
Can yeah. you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, well, I mean, my retirement here at Winnipeg was kind of like a pseudo-retirement slash being forced out. Um, but again, I said, you know, I'm opening a restaurant, so let's retire now. And uh, for a team to call me and say, hey, we want to bring you out and we want you to play, and then I played the next week for them, was amazing. Uh, and then I continued to dress and start five games for Calgary. We went to the Grey Cup. Uh, I still proved I could play. I played in the Grey Cup a little bit. So it was it was a lot of fun. Uh, and it is. It, it's really nice to be wanted. Whatever you do, you want to be wanted. Uh, you want to be in demand, and, and they wanted me, and I thank Calgary for that. And uh, it, it was a, a very, you know, it's a roller coaster. Being a professional athlete, it's a real, it's not all the glamour and glitz is made out to be, especially in the CFL. It is a tough life, uh, and it worked out really good for me. And while you are taking yourself out of the CFL, uh, you're, not, you're not finished being wanted. Um, there's a lot of people out there that still want to have something to do with you. There's some coaching rumors going around. Yeah, well, uh, I'm obviously living in Winnipeg now. I have a restaurant here. And uh, the University of Manitoba Bisons, uh, I've been with, working with Coach Doby for years and years and years uh, since I got here about recruiting and helping the young offensive line. Uh, and they asked me, now that I'm kind of pseudo-retired again, if I'll come help. And I said, for sure. I think it's great. I, I can... I help the kids a lot because I've been there, I've done that, I know what it takes to make it to the pros. So to be to have one foot in football still is really rewarding for me. And your other foot is in with your restaurant. Yes. Can you tell us what made you want to start this? Um, good food. Yeah. yeah, and I think Winnipeg could use some more joints like this. Uh, it's good food, it's a good price point, it's healthy, it's fresh. Um, and uh, I needed a job after football. And I'd have to say it's going pretty amazingly for you from what I know. I mean, you, you cook fresh all yeah. the time, yeah. and you come to the point where you're running out of food. Yeah. You can't ask for more. No, you can't. I mean, uh, our numbers, we thought we're getting four or five times our numbers. Um, it's going really well. I, everything we do is, is fresh in-house. Uh, we try to source as much stuff as we can locally. And, uh, you know, so far people really like the food because they keep coming back. So that's always good, and uh, it takes some stress off of me to know that we, we have a good product and people really like it. And, you know, I, I, I really love it when people come in here and, and uh, support the biz. For those who aren't familiar with the product, can you explain what a shawarma is? Well, a shawarma is on the back wall here. I don't know if we can get it in camera, but it's basically a way of cooking the meat on these vertical spits. So it's massive, massive amounts of meat on these rotating spits that spin. We marinate them for 24 hours. They rotate all day, and uh, they cook... Uh, and you slice it off and you put it in a pita and you wrap it up or in a plate and it's delicious. And I have one more question that I try to ask each of my guests. Yes. Hi, it's actually about your sock choice. Okay. I would like to know what type of socks you wear, what you're wearing today, and uh, why. Oh man, I wish I would have worn my cool funky socks. I got these really cool pair of socks. They're like blue and purple and pink. They're like, the, you know, those really cool edgy ones. Yeah. But at work, I wear, you know, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, can I get it up here? I don't know. It's I think just, you can. It's just a, oh, I'm actually wearing Nike, so I'm matching. A Nike shoe go. with a Nike, a Nike and my hairy legs. I haven't shaved in a while, sorry. I'll um, forgive you this time. Yeah. It's Winnipeg, so it's cold. I wear, I wear ankle socks all the time and, uh, and when I'm at work and then when I'm out, I have my party socks. And those are the colorful those ones. Those are the colorful ones and they're, they're party socks. And what? that's you, Party Avi. Yeah. Party Avi. I like it. Thank you so much, Avi. Thank you.